Welcome everyone to Weird Wolf Unchained. I'm Bran. Sarah. Robert. And uh, this is Movies with My Monsters, where I watch a horror movie or a scary movie with my kids, and then we talk about it afterwards. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what did we watch today? Paranormal Activity 3. Yeah? Yeah. Did you go, yeah. Oh, I forgot I was going to do that. You guys want to try to summarize it, or should I try to find the thing? You should, you should try, try to find the thing. thing. All right. Because I definitely won't be able to summarize it. All right. So, Paranormal Activity 3. In 1988, sisters Katie and Christy seem to be enjoying a normal, happy childhood at home. But when strange things start going bump in the night, their father, a wedding videographer, decides to use his cameras to discover the source, especially since Christy appears to be having conversations with an imaginary friend. While the cameras do indeed reveal a flurry of supernatural occurrences, the family is unprepared for the terror that awaits. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, from the part that, part that I've watched... You watched almost the whole movie. Yeah. All but like the last, what, two minutes? I'd say about, oh, about a couple seconds. That's what it felt like. It wasn't very long. It was only a couple minutes at most. Anyways, so what do you guys think of this story? It was good. It was, a, it was definitely super, super scary. So my hype was warranted because I told you guys it was the scariest one so far, right? Yeah. Now, personally, I don't think the ones that come after this are as scary, but, you know, that's me. I didn't feel as scared, and this movie definitely did a lot of things that got to me. So, Can we start with the favorite part? Well, hold on. Let's talk about the plot. Do you okay. think it was a good plot? Yeah. I know you're excited, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had Robbie. a good plot. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think it fit in with the other ones okay? Yeah. 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 I like that it gives the entity a name. Yeah, that's kind of fun. A little bit. I don't even remember the name. Toby. I thought it was Tommy. Toby, Tommy, <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. We'll go ahead. Sarah, what was your favorite part? Uh... I liked when Toby dressed up as, as ghost. He's like, you want to make fun of me? You want to call me a ghost? <laughs> or something? He wasn't you make dressing fun of me? up as a ghost. He was holding the sheet out like it was a ghost. Oh, that's one of my favorite scenes in the movie because the babysitter was telling a ghost story and she dressed up. And you know that Christy's been getting up out of bed. So when you first see it, it gives you the impression that maybe it's just Christy down there messing with the babysitter, right? Yeah. Or that's what it's supposed to be doing. And then when she turns around and it falls, you go, oh, no, there's something else going on here, which is a good setup for the next part with the babysitter when she goes upstairs to check on the girls, right? Yeah. Because now you're like, oh, Toby's messing with her. What's he going to do? <laughs> And then your brain starts thinking of all kinds of crazy, weird stuff he could do, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the camera was turning, I was being like, please don't hide behind the camera and, and jump out again. Please don't do that again. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a favorite part, Robbie? Uh, no. No? <laughs> nothing at all? Nothing that made you laugh or... And remember, favorite part doesn't have to be a story element. It could be something that they do with the sound or with the camera work or, a, well, the uh, character is a different area. But it could be something with how it was filmed and made. Another thing, I enjoy the turning camera because it gives you suspicion of what's going to happen. Like when Christy was up there and she just disappeared. Yeah, because that's one of my favorite parts of this movie is the oscillating camera. Because it helps so much build tension in so many scenes. Because 
you're looking at something and then it comes away and then it comes back and it it's changes different. a little bit and then it goes away and then it comes back. Oh, it's so great. I love that. My favorite part is when the mom has her hand in the garbage disposal. Do you know what the garbage disposal is? No. I thought the movie explained it a little bit better. So garbage disposal is in your sink and you put food down in it. You should know Papa had a garbage disposal. I don't remember. You, that's possible. But he put like <laughs> eggshells and bones and stuff in it and it would grind it up. So that way it could go down the drain nice and easy. So when the mom has her hand in there, she was using the garbage disposal beforehand. And there's a, a spoon or a fork or something down in it. And I like that scene. It's my favorite part. And it's what I think is the scariest of all the movies because you're anticipating is Toby going to turn the garbage disposal on and cause her hand real harm or what's going on. But then you have the light going on at the same time to let you know he's there and it just really builds the tension and it comes back and the light bulb explodes. So it's a very effective jump scare because you don't know what's actually going to happen. Oh, I remember that scene. Um, favorite characters? Anybody have any favorite characters? Uh, my favorite character was, um, I don't remember his name, but he had to babysit Katie because Chris Randy. Randy. Yeah, Randy. Why'd you like him? Because he looks cool. Because he looks cool? <laughs> and... <laughs> I can get down with that. And I like the way he talks. Yeah. I liked Christy. Why? Because she was so serious with Toby. Yeah? Yeah. The little girl did do a pretty good job acting that out, didn't she? Like, this, for the most part, this is a pretty solid movie. I like, I like all the characters. Nobody's bad. Nobody's over the top ridiculous about it. There's a few things that I personally would have liked to have seen, but you'll have to wait until I talk to Ryan about that. People out in the sphere. Because <laughs> that's not what this is about. This is this is what the kids think about it. I it, It's hard for me to pick out a favorite just because everybody's so likable. They're, they feel like real people and nobody's mean or jerk or so over the top dismissive that it's unbelievable or anything, or even the ones when they are believable. It, I don't know. This movie does a really good job when people are being dismissive and, and stuff of having a solid reason for it. There, there's this, there's this one scene that kind of makes, makes Katie my least favorite character when she's going to play Bloody Mary with Christy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, well, Katie is a little bit brutish about that. She just wants to do it so much. She just she wants to do it, and she's just doesn't matter how anybody else feels. But it's interesting that she's not willing to do it alone, right? Yeah. She tried to do it alone the first time, didn't she? So, uh, no. She brought Christy in with her. So, you would say Katie's your least favorite in this one? Because of how, because of how bad she, she wants to play Bloody Mary. I can see that. That's understandable. I think she's all right most of the rest of the time. And I don't like that if we didn't get to see, like, the shadowy figure at the foot of the bed that was mentioned in the first one. Yeah. That is. And I have an interesting bit that I think about that because in the first one, from psychological point, it's understandable that Katie might embellish or misremember things because she's trying to make herself more of the victim in the situation and saying things like that would get people to feel um badly more badly for her i feel like she was more of the victim because as toby picks on her more toby is a lot more aggressive towards her yes and i mean she kind of brings some of that on her own but also some of that Toby doesn't really start being really mean to her until after Christy says that she wants him to leave her alone, right? Yeah. 
because Toby's being mean to everybody around Christy to try to make Christy do what he wants. Does that make sense? I thought it started when when Katie said that Toby wasn't real and walked into Toby's closet. A little bit of it when she's being mean to Christy and calling her a baby and saying that only babies have imaginary friends. Yeah. So there, there's that one, but most of the rest of them happen after. And that and, might be part of the reason why he is more antagonistic towards Katie. And not the adults. And not the adults. Who is your least favorite character? Uh. If you had one. Does Toby count? Sure. <laughs> Okay, Toby, then. You're not necessarily supposed to like him, but... (laughs) Toby's my least favorite character. Mm. Uh, The grandmother. Why? Um, Because, again, this is like with Toby, you're not supposed to like her necessarily. But she's the one kind of orchestrating all of this and making it happen. Did you catch that at the end? Yeah. Uh, and I think she was the one who brainwashed the people. It's possible. I mean, we don't really know what happened with that, right? What was that triangular symbol thing that was everywhere? That was a cult or a symbol for a coven or a cult or whatever that the grandmother belongs to. And it's kind of associated to Toby. It's kind of like his symbol because he's their personal demon that they work with. I also noticed the single pentacle. Yep. Yeah. And And that's, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that being included. I also saw uh, a, I think it was an isosceles triangle with a circle in it. Not the right triangle, the isosceles triangle. And it had a horse room here. Mm -hmm. Where at? In Toby's closet. A moon here. Which is, it was a similar symbol, and it had some runes around it. Yes. But it was isosceles because it was drawn. So, this is the wall, and this is the ceiling, and it was drawn on the wall and the ceiling, kind of. And it was very haphazard. Maybe one of the girls drew it. We don't know. It's just one of those things that appeared and is supposed to be creepy. If it was one of the girls, it was probably Christy. Very possible, yes. Um. So, what were your least favorite parts? Like I said, I was pretty disappointed that we didn't get to see the figure at the foot of the bed. Yeah, but I can, me personally, again, I can kind of dismiss that being a little bit more grown up and understanding human psychology a little bit better, that maybe it didn't actually happen that way, and Katie's just remembering it that way, or she's embellishing her story that way to make herself sound like more of a victim. And again, only Christy can see it, so why would we be able to see it? <laughs> hmm. You were trying to say something. Trying to say something again. Another, trying to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Another like, thing that I did like is, is in, when the kitchen exploded, it exploded in a different way instead of the cupboards flying open. Everything. That was another one of my personal favorite scares because it is different. <laughs> and again, I remember it di- differently. I don't remember the mom stopping and going, wait, what the hell is going on? I remember the camera coming back and me going, whoa, where's the table? And then the mom coming in and going, whoa, where's the table? And then everything falls. That's just how I remember it. I don't know. Maybe I put it together that way in my brain because I think it works better. Who knows? But an example to illustrate, like with Katie, that, you know, maybe things don't always work that way. What was your least favorite part besides the whole movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
My least favorite part was when Toby knocked on the door and then used his magic to pull everything up off the kitchen, everything up to the kitchen ceiling, mm -hmm. and then dropped it because it was so brutal to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, is that also your scariest part? No. No? Okay, we'll come to that here in a minute. Um, my least favorite part is the inclusion of the cold stuff. It's just... It starts messing with the lore that's established in the first two. And not in a way that I think helps the story. And... It starts making it more convoluted. I mean, I get it with the tablet thing in the girl's room because that's the weird thing happening. The symbol? Yeah. Symbol glows. Do you know what that was? No. It was a light bright. You should know what a light bright is. You used to have one. It looked like a tablet from so far away. But it, but it's an old light bright because it used to just be kind of like um, a TV. Like an older TV that's, I don't know if you've ever even seen one. Wow, you're making me feel old. <laughs> no, TVs was intended that used to be them. a big box. Yeah, because yeah. you don't really see their TVs in these in this movie because this takes place in 1988. Yeah. So if it's taking place in 1988, I would have been five years old. So that was 32 years ago. Yeah, I just aged myself, people. You're welcome. <laughs> and they were eight then. Um, Katie was eight. Christy was a little bit younger. She was closer to the age I would have been. Five or six. It wasn't Katie eight when the house burned down? No. Because if you pay attention, she says when I was eight, this stuff was happening. But she does say that their house burned down 15 years ago. I think at the time, which was 1992. So she was like 13 hmm. and has problems with that too. That's one of the things that bothers me the most about this movie. I wanted to see the house burn down. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's another thing. That, that was one of my expectations that was set up. And the mom, I was very disappointed in that too. Like, <clears throat> I was like, okay, they're kids. I'm going to see. I can't wait to see this. The shadow of the figure set. Right, all these things that are set up in the first two movies that they didn't pull through on. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, yours, yours, mine. That was least favorite thing, right? Yes. Scariest parts, Sarah. Okay. Uh, my scariest part was when Katie turned around because it looked like she was possessed. So the demon face? Which you asked if it was going to happen, right? At the beginning of the movie? I don't remember asking You asked that. if the shadowy face was going to happen? Or the shadow was going to go with the camera again? Whatever. But one thing that was cute... But, I, but that made me wonder... How did she get back if she got possessed again? If this is the first time that she did get possessed... That's a good question. And uh, and I also thought to myself... But thinking of the brainwashing, maybe Toby let her go for a while. And me, and I thought to myself, man, that's probably why why Toby possessed Esther so easily in the first one. Because he already, he'd already possessed her once. Could be. It could be. What about you, Rob? Uh, my scariest part... It was when uh, Katie was whimpering while she was possessed and then turned around and then crawled away. And she attacked uh, the boyfriend. Do you remember his name? I think it begins with a D. It does. Dennis. I don't know why none of these people's names are sticking with me. Except I'm usually for Toby. not that bad. Except for Toby. Well, he's a repeat character, so makes sense, right? Toby's a fun name to say too. So that was your scariest part, but uh. Yeah. 
mine again was the garbage disposal scene because I know what they do and it's the type of gore that kind of bothers me a little bit. Body gore? Well, it, it, it's something that I can imagine how it feels a little bit. Not that I've ever stuck my hand in a garbage disposal and had it chopped up, but I can, I can visualize or imagine it well enough based on other injuries that I've had. And it's a very realistic thing. And just the tension that's built in that scene, going back and forth and wondering what's going to happen, and then the jump scare with the light exploding. I bet body gore would be something else disturbing, more disturbing t in the jump scares to me, too, because blood grosses me out. I've seen lots of things with blood, and I, I don't like it. <laughs> well... Yeah. Including that's something that we'll get to that's something we'll get to later on when you guys when I, when I feel you guys can handle it a little a little bit better so do you think the atmosphere of this movie was set up pretty well atmosphere yes that's how the movie itself feels so um like Ryan and I kind of talked about it a little bit in our episode of talking about the first two movies how a lot of the stuff in the first one happens during the day and it doesn't have the same ominous feeling as this one and the first one do. So like you were sitting with me for a lot of the movie, I could tell when nighttime happened, you were like, oh, great, what's going to happen, right? I could feel your body tense up and your heart rate speed up a little bit. Yeah. My heart was sped up for most of the movie. This was definitely the scariest so far. So, but the second one wasn't quite as scary, even though it had some bigger scares than the first one, right? Yes. And I don't know if it's because so much of it happens during the day, or they don't make as much use of the sound, or it's the cameras. It's hard to quite pinpoint what it is in the second one, but the atmosphere just doesn't gets set up quite as well. Or maybe it's just, it. I don't know. I had a thought there for a second, but I lost it. So does it, does it atmosphere, do you understand atmosphere a little bit? A little bit. We'll, we'll start talking about it a little bit more. Uh, let's, let's go back into this. So like they definitely use the music a lot more in this one or the sound, the. Yes. Right. I remembered what I was going to say now. Okay. Uh, I think, think why it's scarier, even though it has less scares in this one, it feels like. The scares were bigger. A little bit. And again, it comes down to the atmosphere. It This movie makes you feel dread almost every scene. Because even during the day, even though Toby isn't as active during the day, He's they still. do earlier in the movie, they set up like real life people met like practical joke kind of scares. Right. Yeah. Like when Julia goes upstairs and hides in the closet after they first start recording. Yeah. And she thumps around and they come up and she's wearing the Wolfman mask and she jumps out and scares them. That was, that's my uh... That's I was I was thinking that's probably gonna be my, my scariest part after that because that one was probably that was a my pretty good one, scariest. huh? <laughs> because the mask is just so ugly. Yeah, I thought it was a, an ugly goblin mask. But like this movie starts, and things start happening almost right away, and it just doesn't stop. And. Uh, and what I thought would happen is... Uh, Ooh, maybe. Maybe because of the second one, you know that daytime isn't off limits. So even during the day, you don't feel safe with this movie, watching this one, because the second one sets it up so much better that things can still happen during the day. What I thought was going to happen is... 
Because we didn't know Toby's name at the time and going to call it the Entity. And the Entity would jump out in full form. Because it feels stronger in 3 than 2 and in 2 than 1. Yeah. Yes. That's why I didn't kind get of. In my hopes up, up in, uh, until the very end for the shadow at the foot of the bed. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. I mean, we did get a lot of good shadow play, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. With the cracked doors. Oh, yeah. man. That was good stuff. And Christy <laughs> running back and forth. I thought that would it'd be Toby. But you get right once, once Christy starts talking to Toby that this is the entity. It's Toby now. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's see if there's anything else to get into here. Is there anything that you guys would fix about it, story-wise, not make it less scary. <laughs> uh, no. This was a pretty good one. I've got a lot of ideas. Again, I have a really big problem with the cult thing. But other than that, the only other thing I do is like when Christy goes downstairs and she's climbing on the table, or maybe when she climbs on the counter, well, I don't even think she climbs up on the counter. I think Toby puts her up there. Yeah. Oh, I've got a thing I would fix. But hold on. When she's playing on the on the table, I would have liked to have seen her jumping off there and Toby catching her, right? And then Toby not catch her because later on when she goes up or when she's climbing on her banister and she jumps off, that would make that part even more intense because you know that Toby's not necessarily always going to catch her. I expected to hear a splat when she jumped off. And I mean, that's a good scene to begin with. I just think that would make it even more scary. Huh. And maybe they had done something like that. Who knows? <laughs> One thing I would fix when she was climbing on the railing and she jumped off, I would make her jump off sooner. Because I was just waiting for it to happen. Yeah. Well, and it's it's designed that way to build tension. Because she's a little cautious of it. She's not sure if she wants to. I but... thought she was going to jump off sooner because she was giggling a little bit. Yeah. And another thing I would do is show her falling off, jumping off, uh, and show what happened. I could understand them not, because that's going to require a lot of effects. And while there are a lot of special effects in this, and most of them practical in these movies, um, it just seems like something that would be a little too much. Which is a little contradictory if you think about how I said she should jump off the table and be caught by, Co by Toby. But that one's a little bit easier because it's not as far of a fall. Like they'd probably have to do digital and all kinds of different stuff. And it's lessened or the intensity is lessened by watching her fall. Because do you think it would be as scary if you're watching her fall? Or is it more scary seeing her jump off and not knowing what's happening? Uh, more scary not knowing what's happening. Exactly. I'm not sure, because even watching, I wouldn't know how, what would happen at the end. No, but watching it, you have this visual experience of seeing her falling and then not being hurt versus her jump off, not hearing anything for a moment, and then she comes running up the stairs. Well, Because you're expecting a splat. You don't hear it, but you don't know what's going on. Well, it shows her running around downstairs before she, or it shows her coming back yeah, up. Yeah, you're right. It does go back downstairs and it shows her running around. But if it hadn't, if you had watched her just fall and get caught by Toby, is that really as scary as watching her jump and not seeing if she makes it or not? I don't know. Because when... this is something that's real important for a lot of horror. Because there's a lot of the... Movies that are highly praised by people are praised because of what they 
don't show you. And maybe it's because you're, you're young and you don't, haven't experienced or thought of a lot of this stuff. So your brain can't put in as much. I don't know, because when Julie's body was levitating, that was scary. Levitation kind of scares me a little bit. Levitation is something. Is something. I don't know. I'll have to explain Does it. levitation bother you in superhero movies? No. Because most of those people are using levitation or something similar to fly. It's... I think it's just in horror movies because I know they're not superheroes. They're not using their own powers. And, and that's that's the point of it. Is because when you first see Julia at the end there, when she's levitating, she doesn't look like she's levitating, right? Yeah. She yeah. just looks like she's standing at the top of the stairs being creepy. Yeah. Yeah. And then he starts walking up the stairs and then you realize she's levitating. Yeah, and, and it just levitates a little bit. But she's not levitating. She's being held up by Toby. Yes, but it looks like levitation. And I know it's not something they know how to do, not something natural. And that's the point. And it's not levitating a lot of, lot of amount. It's just levitating a little bit, which... Makes which gives it this possessed feel to it. A little bit, yeah. Because at that moment, you don't. Is she possessed? Is she? What's going on here? Is this a new power that we haven't seen? It's your brain asking questions and trying to fill in the blanks with the things that it knows because it doesn't know, and that's what makes it scary. Ooh, a. Th- Back to uh, how it how the how Toby feels stronger in the third third one than the second one, and then the second one he feels stronger than the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Katie isn't levitating, but if they added in Katie levit Katie levitating like Christy levitating, that would kind of prove it. If they did show Toby catching Well, they're not Christy. levitating, though. They're being held by Toby. I know, but... But it would... But it feels like levitation. It looks like it, yes, but it's not. That's hard to grasp on. Why? It just feels so much like levitation. And... But levitation is something that you do for yourself. Which is probably why it's not scary in, or doesn't disturb you in superhero movies and stuff. Because it's something that you know that they're choosing to do. Whereas this, they're not actually levitating. They're being suspended. Anybody got anything else? Uh, are we on things that we're fixing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like you, sir. And, um, I would fix the Colts. Because I thought they were rooms, and I wanted to go up and grab the bag of rooms and, and then look through and see what rooms they, they were. Uh, do you know what a cult is? No. Okay. The cult is are the other women, and they were there to do a ritual to, we're led to assume, marry Christy to Toby. Or something. They were there for some nefarious purpose. I don't like the cult stuff. Because it takes away. It it adds this extra layer of all these people. That are. Working with this demon. To gain wealth and power. I, I can respect that aspect of it. Because that does tie into the second one. Where it takes away from me on that. Is that it was it's a lot more intense to the story if it's just the one person who did this instead of being part of a collective, part of a group of people. And a cult is the group of people. I don't understand why Toby killed Christy but kept Katie and possessed her. 
because uh, Christy made him mad and gave him what he wanted. Because what does Toby want? Hunter. Firstborn male. And that's what Christy provides. So think about that. Christy has the firstborn male. Maybe, just maybe, Toby knows that she is going to provide this thing that has been promised to him. So he treats her better and tries to take care of her in a way while letting her know that he's around. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything else that you would fix? Knowing what a cult is now, do you understand a cult a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Coven might be a little bit better a word um, to help you understand better. The coven is a group of witches, and that's essentially what they're doing. They're summoning demons and devils to bargain with to gain wealth and power. So, at first, when, when Christy was talking to Toby, I thought maybe Christy would be the one who was conversing with the demon for wealth and power. Mm. Does that make sense for a child to do, though? No. Okay. <laughs> it's just because she, she's the only one we've seen talking to him. And again, I think that has to do with the fact that maybe Toby knows that she is going to provide this first mail that has been promised to him. Because what do they say in the second one? That a demon wants the firstborn male and haunts them until there is one. Yeah, and some people will sacrifice. But it said specifically that some people sacrifice the firstborn male. Well, there, that's what giving him the firstborn male is. is kind of a sacrifice. It's an offering. I have a, a question for you, Robbie. Did you notice me squeezing your arm? Yeah. Did you know why I was doing it? No. It was a warning to let you know that scary parts were coming. Something I, I was doing it to try to help break the tension for you. One, maybe a little bit of a distraction. Two, to inform you that, yes, this is going to be scary. Be ready for it. I didn't know, but, that, but I thought you were doing it for that reason. Because <laughs> like, I wasn't joking when I said this is the scariest one. Uh, did I ask how scared you guys were? No. Because we should get around to wrapping this up, probably. This is a good conversation. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. So, how scared were you, Sarah? I wasn't absolutely terrified like was for the second one. I'm not I'm asking maybe, about oh. Robbie. I'm asking about you. How scared were you today watching this movie? I wasn't ex as scared as he might have been, and probably. It wasn't absolutely terrifying, but it was definitely scarier than the other ones. Wasn't. Well, we don't really have a scary skill to watch yet, to, to attach this to yet. It wasn't super scary, but it wasn't not, but it wasn't. Do you do one to 10 stuff at school? No. Do you understand one to 10? Yes. Okay. If you were to give it one to 10, where would you put it? Seven or eight. Fair enough. 10. (laughs) (laughs) And that's okay. That's what it's supposed to do, right? Yeah. (laughs) And it it, was good. I put it at seven or eight because... It didn't scare me so much it would give me nightmares, but because that's what 10 would be, right? Potentially, yeah. But I could kind of take a little break from it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm already maybe scary stories to watch in the dark next time. I already need a break, and we literally just took a break. Well, kind of, because we watched Invisible Man last, and that was just last week, because we're kind of shoehorning this one in because I'm going to be busy next weekend in a way that we won't have time to watch movies. Uh-huh. So, is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark okay for you to watch uh-huh. next? You sit on that and think about it. We'll we'll answer that off air. Um, Would you watch this again, Sarah? Yes. Robbie? Uh, maybe later. Maybe later? Yeah. Once you're getting a little bit desensitized to it. Yeah. <laughs> and it would be nice. I just thought of this to watch these again, maybe a couple, two, three years down the road. Yeah. 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 
and see how you guys feel about them then, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I would watch it again because it's a... We got a lot of movies to watch. I would watch it again because because it's a good movie. But later, when I'm prepared for everything, so it's a little bit less scary. Well, in a couple, two or three years, you're going to have forgotten some things, too. You might remember some things, but you might forget some things, too. I mean, like, I forgot stuff, and I just watched this a few weeks ago, a couple months ago. I uh, like scary movies. I do, too. Or um, it might be my favorite genre for movies. Oh, and all the scary movies that I've watched so far don't have any CGI in it. Not true. Huh? Scary stories to tell in the dark. But I can't tell it. There, so there are practical effects, but a lot of it is... Uh, touched up, quote unquote, with CGI. Because I hate CGI vomit. All right. Well, we're gonna wrap this up. Thanks for listening. Um, if you're catching this on YouTube, this is also available as a podcast. Should be obvious because it's pretty much audio only. Uh, if you're listening to this, we do also put these on YouTube. Um. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, podcast side, give us some ratings. Let us know what you think of the show. Because there's a few of them out now. Um, toodles. Bye.